Hello, everybody. My name is Beckwith, Paul Beckwith. And I'm always trying to be a bit of a detective on the climate system, trying to figure out the components and how things interact and <coughs> the effects and where that's taking us in the uh, near term future. So my second to last video was talking about the severe droughts in Iran and other parts of the Middle East. And then asking the question, is it possibly due to the failing AMOC? Um, that I looked at the paleo records, 4.2 kilo year event, 4,200 years ago, about 2000 BC, when many different civilizations around the world underwent ter total turmoil. Some of them lost 80% of their population. Some of these large urban centers just completely closed down as agriculture failed and drought kicked in for a century. Then I talked <coughs> in more detail about this 4.2K event, showed some of the science of it and uh, you know what, what, what can happen. And now I'm looking at another related aspect of it, which is there's ongoing warming in the deepest parts of the Arctic Ocean right now. And I guess the question is, can this be related to a reducing AMOC? And I think the answer is yes. Often on the fringes where sea ice is formed, if you've got salt water, ocean water, it's about three and a half percent salt or 35 practical salinity units or parts per, parts per thousand. Um, and when ice forms, when the salt water freezes, about half of the salt is entrained within the ice. It's trapped in brine pockets within the ice. So that's about 1.75% concentration, about half of what it is, half of the 3.5% in normal ocean water. So what happens to the surrounding water around the ice? Well, it gets much, much saltier and it's cold. So it descends to the ocean floor and that's the ocean conveyor system. So if that is slowing down, if that effect is slowing down as ice retreats and other factors come into play, lots of melt melting on the surface of the oceans, it's lighter water. So if that's slowing down, we would expect warming of the Greenland basin, right? Warming at the bottom of the ocean floor off Green South Greenland. And we would also expect warming, that warming water to impinge and go into the Arctic, into uh, various parts of the Arctic and uh, cause warming. And this is exactly what we're seeing. <coughs> if this warm water gets over the East Siberian Arctic shelf, of course, we know that there's a lot of methane in the seafloor sediments. And the warming, if we get thawing of that undersea permafrost, then we can get huge increases in methane in the, in the atmosphere. And this is a very, very bad thing. So there's, like I said, the AMOC is the mother of all tipping points. So let's have a look at uh, what's happening to the deepest parts of the Arctic Ocean <coughs> in terms of the warming. And this article just came out um, <coughs> November 20th, yesterday. Okay, so climate change is now warming the deepest parts of the Arctic Ocean. So this is showing, this shows it all right here. Get the warming water at the surface. The Arctic is different layer regions of the Arctic. This is the Greenland Basin, ocean floor just south of Greenland. The Fram Strait gets a bit shallower. Um, and then we have the Eurasia, uh, Eurasia Basin. Um, or or uh, is it the, uh, the EB? The Eurasian Basin. And then we have the Amerasian Basin, AB. Got the Lomasov Ridge here, very shallow, shallow water here. Okay, so we're getting dramatic warming over here, 0 0.103 degrees Celsius per decade, according to this study. And then the water is flowing in, in inland, flowing into the Arctic Ocean, rather. And in this region here, the Eurasian Basin, it's 0 0.02 degrees Celsius per decade, about five times slower. Because, uh, you know, it takes time for the water to come in. Then we have this Lomasov Ridge, which kind of divides the two basins in the Arctic. 
Some of the water makes it over the ridge and we get gradual warming 0.003 degrees Celsius per decade. So that's, um, you know, we start off very high dramatic warming. About a fifth of that rate is warming here and about another, uh, you know, another, <coughs> not quite a tenth of that rate, you know, an eighth of that rate or whatever in this basin. So we're getting, we're seeing these effects happening today. So what does this say about the AMOC? Probably very worrying things. Also, you know, in the shallower water over the East Siberian Arctic Shelf, for example, you know, this warming, uh, if it continues to accelerate, uh, is going to be a problem for thawing methane on this, on this, in, in that shallow water over the East Siberian Arctic Shelf, a huge Arctic, a huge shelf in the Arctic. Okay, so basically it's well known that climate change is heating the world's oceans, but it was thought that the deep sea was safe from its effects until now. So the researchers, so these are Chinese researchers that have done this study in China. Thank God for China, since the U.S. Uh, government is trying to kill all science, especially climate science, but all science in, in the U.S. take us back into another dark ages. Who would have thought this would have happened? Wow. Researchers have discovered that a rapidly warming part of the Arctic, Atlantic, right? The, the, the Greenland Basin is leading to the heating up of the Arctic Ocean depth. So for years, scientists thought that any warming of these cold depths was due to geothermal heating. Heat coming up through the layers of the earth, warming the water on top. Okay, because in these deep parts of the ocean, the continental um, crust is very, very thin. So you can get heat transporting up, geothermal heat. Okay, so we thought that it was geothermal that was heating that water. <laughs> but recent observations show that the warming rate in some deep areas was greater than what geothermal heating alone could explain. So the researchers are from Ocean University of China and Laoshan Laboratory, and they published the results in the journal Science Advances, which is open source. It's not behind a paywall. I'll show it to you in a minute. So they looked at decades of temperature data. They ran sophisticated computer models. Every time I see that word sophisticated, I have to laugh because like, are they really going to say they ran do it yourself, crappy, you know, <laughs> garage, garage style computer models? No, it, you, I mean, you never, all computer models are claimed to be sophisticated. Anyway, it's just my, just an aside. But anyway, they ran sophisticated commute computer models to identify, you know, where's that heat coming from? They found that the deep water in the Eurasian basin was warming up 0 0.02 degrees Celsius per decade. May not sound like a lot, but it's too fast to explain, to be explained by the natural geothermal heating alone. So in their models, they simulated the features of the deep Arctic Ocean, including the Eurasian Basin, the EB, the Amerasian Basin, AB, the Lomonosov Ridge, LR. So that's this ridge here. It comes to within about 1500 meters of the surface. And and this and and uh, what separates them here, the Fram Strait, right, the narrow strait. So the water is very warm in the Greenland Basin, um, and this would be explained. Uh, well, the heat's getting down there. Maybe the cold water that feeds, you know, from that ice melt, ice formation effect. Maybe that's stopping the downwelling of that cold, salty water. So that's leading to the warming. So this could be indicative of an AMOC uh, severely reduced, which I think is what happening, what's happening. Um, so you can see this is, this is, these are temperatures and um, potential temperature differences, you know, rates of temperature change. So warming a lot here, warming less here, warming even less here because it has to get over the, low, the ridge, the water, and, and, and over here in the deepest parts of the Arctic, it's, it's warming the least. And you can see this um, image here. I'll sh well, I'll, show, I'll, I'll get to more when I, when there's, there's other data, I'll show you the paper. So basically the conclusion is that extra warming is due to the Greenland Basin, which used to be Arctic's main source of cold water because of that um, ice formation effect, rejecting the brine. So that's happening less. It's no d d warming, it's now warming so quickly 
that it's no longer performing the role, the Greenland Basin. Instead of supplying the Eurasian Basin with a stream of water that's not as cold as it used to be, so that's driving rising temperatures. The scientists also discovered that the Lomonosov Ridge acts as a shield, preventing the less cold water from reaching the Amerasian Basin. So it's warming more slowly there. So the warming of the deep Greenland Basin has already exerted obvious impacts on the deep Arctic Ocean, say the researchers. The horizontal advection or movement of heat from the warming <laughs> Greenland Basin deep water is a dominant factor driving the rapid warming of the deep Eurasian basin. So climate change is having a far greater effect on oceans than previously thought, impacting the deepest regions. There's a link to the paper here. So let's have a look at the peer-reviewed paper, what it tells us. So here it is here, science advances. Okay, uh, five authors at the Chinese uh, science institutions oceanography, <coughs> deep Arctic ocean warming enhanced by heat transferred from deep Atlantic. So observations since the 90s reveal widespread warming in the deep and bottom Arctic ocean. It's historically been attributed to geothermal heating, but the impacts of global and Arctic climate change on the deep and bottom Arctic water, uh, although they remain unresolved, there the studies like this are giving us more information. So during recent decades, the Arctic Ocean deep warming, deep water is warming at 0 0.02 degrees Celsius per decade in the Eurasian Basin between 2,000 and 2,600 meters. Um, and there's rapid, war so rapid warming in the deep Greenland Basin um, <laughs> is, uh, you know, that water is going into the Arctic and, and causing warming of the deep water there. The Lomonosov Ridge blocks a lot of the warming signal from reaching the deep Amerasian Basin, but it, so it has a relatively slow warming rate of 0 0.003 degrees Celsius per decade, which is still, you know, which is, which is still, you know, still warming. Okay, so they talk about the details of the slopes and so on. They stop, talk about what they call slope convection as a key mechanism for warming the deep water. So in the shallow Arctic shelf regions, when you get sea ice formation, it rejects brine. So yeah, let me just, so basically the sea ice forms. Seawater freezes, sea ice forms, trapped within the sea ice is about half of the salt. And the other half makes the surrounding water saltier and it's cold, so it sinks down to, to cool the abyss. Uh, over time, over over time, those brine, that salt in the sea ice the brine, is in brine pockets, and those brine pockets are denser than the sea ice, so it works its way through the ice and eventually goes out of the ice into the ocean if you have multi-year ice. When you have multi-year ice, it's, it's almost no salt at all, the older the ice is. Okay, so <coughs> that's how it works. Uh, anyway, the dense shelf waters that are, you know, cold saline waters, super salty, because they have the extra brine that's rejected from the ice formation. They descend through the water column till they reach neutral buoyancy. Um, anyway, they bring, they bring colder water signals down below. So let's have a look at the, um, the results here. I showed you this plot here. So the Greenland Basin, greatest warming rate. Then the Eurasian Basin, it's less by a factor of about 10, the warming rate. Water has to get over these underwater features through the Fram Strait, Narrow Strait, etc. Then you have the Lomonosov Ridge, which splits the Arctic into the Euro Basin, Euro Asian Basin, and Amerasian Basin. So the warming in the Amerasian Basin is a factor about eight lower than what it is here, because water, it takes time, and this is a real constraint to the warmer water getting deeper into the Arctic. So this is the uh, depth of the water um, in different basins and the, the, the warming rate. So you have the Greenland Basin warming very, very fast. Then you have the Euro-Asian ba Euro Basin warming next fastest, right? But still quite a bit slower than the Greenland Basin. And then you have the Amerasian Basin, which is isolated by the, Lom the El Lomonosov Ridge. So it's warming at the slowest rate. So here is the regions really high warming here, Greenland Basin, Fram Strait, 
narrow. The heat, some of the heat gets in. So this is the Eurasian Basin warming. And they, these are all data points where they've measured water temperature. And then the Amerasian Basin here warming the least. Okay, so so this is, uh, this is a really great study. Very well done. And then this is, uh, they divide it, they partition it into depths like 12 to 1400 meters, 2000 to 2200 meters, deeper and deeper water, um, well, <laughs> 16 to 18, and so on. And they look at the warming rate. So when you get out out further, out closer to the Fram Strait, um, you have the greatest warming. You go deeper in, you've got these ridges and things, the topography of the seafloor affecting the warming rate. So that's the bottom line. This is showing the basins warming from 1980 to now. Um, the Amerasian, the Greenland the fastest, next to Eurasian and the Amerasian, slight, slight increase. And this is at different depth, 1500 to 2000 meters, uh, deeper to 2600 meters, and then to the bottom. So very fast warming rates in the Greenland Basin at all depths. Slows down in the Amerasian Basin, or, or uh, Eurasian Basin, and then is the slowest in the in the Amerasian Basin. And uh, more data here. I, but this is what, so this is warming over here. What I really, I, so this is, this is, this, 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 this is really good, this uh, depiction here, which I showed you, which I talked about at the beginning. So you can see the different regions of the Arctic and the different warming rates. And this huge warming here is very concerning because it looks like it's another strong signal of a severely slowing AMOC which is going to really wreak havoc on, on the planet. Okay, so so this paper was just uh, published uh, November 19th, 2025. There you go. It's hot off the presses, and it, it, uh, in, it increases the picture of the climate system as far as the AMOC goes. They don't mention that in here in the paper at all. That's my own uh, opinion and interpretation of the science. So thank you for listening. Please donate to PayPal to support my research and videos and on any and all social media platforms. Just search for Paul Beckwith and please follow me and add comments. And, you know, I try to make sure I go through and address comments to everybody. So, so thank you for listening and uh, bye for now.